Hi, I'm Wilfred Brimley, and I'm here to talk to you about diabetes. Oh, oh, wait, I mean, uh, sorry, wrong video. Um, hey, this is uh, Buff from Motobuff, and welcome to the Motobuff YouTube channel, where today I'm going to teach you how to set up your own suspension. Hey guys, welcome to part one of my suspension setup video on the Motobuff YouTube channel. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not an expert on suspension setup. I'm more of on the amateur do-it-yourself kind of side, but um, I do know a lot about it and I'll be uh, trying to pass along any information that I do have. So if you try to use the suspension settings that I have on my bike in this video for your bike, they may or may not work for you and your weight. But the good news is, is that I can get you uh, pretty close to what you would get if you were to pay for a service to have it done. And this way you'll be able to save a lot of money um, on having it done and happen to go to a track where there is a suspension specialist available to uh, set up your bike for you. But uh, if you do get that chance, I highly suggest that you go and do that and um, get that service done. Those guys are the experts and they'll get you exactly where you need to be. Part one of this video is going to be more of a theoretical um, suspension setup. So uh, today we're just gonna talk about the tools that are gonna be required to set up your motorcycle suspension, some of the theory behind it, why we do it, um, and some other tips and tricks. Part two of this video will be actually me on the motorcycle uh, adjusting it for me. I'm gonna be filming inside today. It's about 30 degrees outside and uh, I don't feel like doing this in the garage. So uh, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot more comfortable for me to sit here and have all the stuff laid out on a table and uh, and do it where it's nice and warm. Uh, however, there is a dog barking next door, so please, uh, if you hear that, just disregard that. The dog barks literally all day, every day, and never shuts up. <laughs> but at least they bring them in at night. So uh, we got that out of the way. Now let's talk about uh, the theory of motorcycle suspension. So why even set up your motorcycle suspension? Don't they usually come from the factory already set up? Um, I had it set up once before at the track. It's still good, right? I don't ride on the track at all. I only ride on the Sunday coffee ride, so do I really need to set it up? These are some common questions that I get all the time when it comes to suspension setup. And the answer is yes, you should set your suspension up for you. And if you've had it done, more than a couple of years ago, then there's a good chance that it may need to be set up again. In my experience, I've seen some motorcycles come from the factory. Uh, they're set up for the average rider, meaning the average 170 pound guy with average riding skills. Uh, so if you differ from that, then your suspension settings may be um, not really appropriate for your level of riding and your weight. Um, also, I've seen some suspensions come from the factory. They're not even set up at all. It's almost as if they put uh, random suspension settings in. I had an R6 once that when I got it from the dealership, it was terrible. Everything was pretty much set to full hard. Uh, the preload was set for somebody who must weigh at least 220 pounds, and it was just not set up good at all. And therefore, when you get on the road, it doesn't ride very well. It was very harsh, very sharp. It jarred the hell out of you. Uh, I was not comfortable to ride at all, but after I got it set up for my weight and my riding ability, uh, it transformed the motorcycle. It felt like a completely different bike altogether, so I highly recommend you have it done, even if you uh, are the average rider that only rides every once in a while. Also, as you ride your motorcycle more and more and more, you put more miles on it, the, oil, the fork and the shock oil inside, that, uh, inside your shocks and your forks they age. Uh, it's kind of similar to when you drive a car. If you drive a car 3,000 miles, the oil in the engine is not going to be what it was when you first got it. And the oil will thin out and it will change your compression and rebound damping as well. So you need to compensate for that as your bike ages. I also get questions of, isn't this hard? Isn't it like a black or a dark art, like a voodoo? You know, I don't want to change my suspension settings because I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up. But it's pretty simple. As long as you count the number of turns that you change your suspension, if you go out and ride it and you don't like it or you think you messed something up, as long as you wrote it down on paper so you know what those suspension settings were when you started, 
you should be able to just adjust it right back to where it was and it shouldn't be a big deal. So the point of this video is to just show that you can do it yourself and it's not that hard um, and you can get it pretty close to where you need it to be. So what exactly does a motorcycle suspension actually do? So when we go out on the road and we ride, the road surface is, is uneven. Um, basically the suspension's job is to compress to absorb any bump in the road and extend down into any dip that may be in the road. There are uh, three different types of suspension settings that you can typically adjust on the average super stock motorcycle. It's gonna be your preload, your compression, and your rebound damping. Preload is gonna be uh, the focus of this video and how to set it up for your weight and your riding ability. The other two we're gonna talk on briefly, um, but it's gonna be more of a feel thing, uh, whatever feels good for you uh, when you get out on the road. With setting your preload, um, we are gonna set it for our weight initially, and that's gonna be our starting point. So we set it to our weight to start with. Um, however, a 170 pound rider that just started riding is gonna put a lot less force into a suspension than an, a pro guy that goes to the racetrack all the time and does track days. Uh, that guy will be much faster, and when you start cornering, uh, you're gonna be putting more force into the shock and the front forks. So they're gonna require a higher preload setting. But we're gonna talk about all that here in just a second. So what is preload? Well, preload is just the tension that is placed on the springs inside the fork or the spring on the rear shock before we add any weight of the bike or the rider to the bike. And that's basically it. It's very simple. It's basically just the force that we have initially before we put any weight on the suspension where that bike is going to be riding in its ride height so why do we have to adjust it well we adjust it to compensate for rider skill and for rider weight and what that does is uh, it allows us to use the most amount of travel that we can use in our suspension without being too hard or too soft and there are also three different types of preload there's static sag rider sag and race sag so static sag is just how much the suspension the suspension actually sags under the weight of itself just the bike um, not any rider or anything else uh, rider sag is the weight of the bike on the suspension plus the rate of the, the weight of the rider sitting on top and then we have race sag or some people call it total sag which is both of those numbers combined Everybody's going to have to have a little bit of static sag and then we're going to adjust the, the preload to get the right rider sag and then those two numbers total will be our total amount of sag. Setting the preload basically tells our suspension what area you want to work in. So if you have a 110 pound guy and he jumps on a motorcycle and he goes out there and the suspension is set up for somebody that weighs 200 pounds, he's going to be riding towards the top part of that suspension travel. So when he hits a bump, it's barely going to compress at all. And when he hits a dip, the suspension is going to top out. Now, conversely, if you have the suspension set up for a 130 pound person, and then you put a 220 pound guy on that motorcycle, he's going to be, he's going to actually sag the suspension down a little bit further. It's going to be working towards the bottom of its stroke. And when you hit a bump, it'll actually bottom the suspension out. And at that point, it's going to be really harsh for the rider and it's going to, um, the tire is the only thing left that's going to absorb that shock. And when your tire starts working as your suspension, you're not in a good place. You could lose traction and uh, the bike's just not going to ride very well. So well, ideally what we want to do is get the right amount of preload available um, or set in the suspension to where um, it doesn't top out and it doesn't bottom out. We want it riding kind of in the middle and we want to be using most of the suspension's available travel. There will be some situations where setting the preload is not going to get you into the right region of, uh, of suspension travel. Um, that can typically happen when you have an average uh, weight rider, like 165, 170 pounds, I think is about average. Um, and if that person 
He's extremely skilled. He's gonna go out there on the racetrack and he's gonna be putting a bunch of force into that suspension. So he's gonna be riding in the bottom of that stroke. Now, if he cranks the preload up, that may help some, but if he's a pro racer, he may actually not be able to get enough preload in the spring. So changing the preload doesn't necessarily change the spring rate or how tight the spring is. All it does is it changes how much force is initially applied to the spring to get you in the right region of suspension travel. So you could actually get the correct um, suspension sag setting with a, a spring that is too soft with a lot of preload or it could be too stiff with not a lot of preload and the bike the quality of the ride will, um, it won't be ideal, but at least it'll be pretty close. Uh, so you can achieve those results. But uh, if you find that you're almost all the way full um, on the preload adjustment and the bike's not riding well, you may need to go to a, uh, a stiffer spring. Or if you don't have hardly any preload in there and it still rides too harsh, uh, then you may need to go down in spring rate. Um, this typically happens when you are, um, if you buy a used motorcycle, maybe a track bike that somebody who is in the expert class used to ride. Um, he may have a spring in the suspension that is a little bit too stiff and you may not be able to put enough force into the suspension for it to be comfortable for you. Or you may have bought a used track bike from a 110 pound girl that may used to ride it. And she may have had a softer spring installed and you get on the bike and you realize that you have to put a lot of preload in it to get the right sag setting and it still doesn't ride well. So then you may have to go up in spring as well um, just to make it uh, more comfortable for you. Um, so setting the sag doesn't always indicate that the suspension is perfect for you and your ability um, you may have to increase or decrease spring rates as necessary to get the desired effect another thing to consider as well is the weight of the rider's gear uh, road racing gear is typically going to be about 20 30 maybe even as heavy as 35 pounds especially if you're wearing airbag suits uh, back protectors um, stronger chest pads things like that if you got your leathers on your boots, um, I'd probably not put on the gloves just because gloves don't weigh anything. And then you're gonna wanna take into account the weight of the helmet as well. Um, some helmets are, are quite heavy. Um, when you're making your adjustments, I've seen some riders, they just take their helmet off and sit it on the tank. That way it's actually on the bike and it's accounted into their, uh, their suspension setting. Um, if it's really hot in your garage, you may not wanna have your helmet on while you're just sitting there because you're gonna be sweating to death. So, uh, that's an option as well. I've also seen some riders just hold their helmet uh, while they do their um, suspension setting. Now let's talk about my 2019 Tuono. It has electronic suspension. It's the Olin Smart EC2. Um, it's a common misconception that this suspension does everything. It doesn't. All it does is it measures um, the road surface and the movement of the suspension and it only changes the compression and the rebound damping. It doesn't do anything with your preload or how much suspension travel you're actually using. So for the purposes of this video, um, I'm going to use the manual mode on the suspension and what that's going to allow me to do is talk to you and demonstrate um, what compression and rebound settings uh, do and how they affect you on the motorcycle. If you're not riding a 2019 Tuono and you have regular manually adjusted suspension, compression and rebound damping I mean, um, you're going to have little, um, little adjustments and most of the time those are a clicking adjustment or a turning adjustment. And you use your uh, screwdriver to count the number of clicks. Um, on my screen, when I put the suspension in manual mode, you can adjust um, up or down and the number of clicks that you would get on manual suspension is displayed on the screen so I can set the suspension manually wherever I'd like and uh, that'll help you guys that don't have the electronic suspension uh, when I go to demonstrate this. Alright so I've got the dashboard powered up here we're gonna leave the bike on for this demonstration but I want to show you guys 
how the compression and rebound actually affects the suspension. So first I'm going to set the suspension. I'm gonna put it in M1, which is the active track mode. And you can hear the servos move when I do that. I'll be quiet for a second. So now we are in M1, which is the manual track mode. Now I'm gonna go into the settings. I'm gonna select Aprilia suspension control. We'll go down to manual track. And this is where we actually change our suspension settings for the manual mode. So front compression, default is 13 clicks. 13 clicks from fully closed. So as I set this number to a higher value, it gets softer and softer. One would be fully closed on the compression pretty much. All right, now I'm gonna set my rebound to 31 clicks. That's the highest it'll go. For those of you that already have Olin suspension, you might already know that there's 31 clicks on a manual suspension as well. So now we'll go out of there, go out of here, go out, and go out. And now we'll be able to demonstrate what a fully soft, fully opened up uh, compression and rebound setting looks like when we jostle the bike up and down. Okay, so with the suspension fully opened up, what I'm going to do is hold the brakes and I'm going to jostle the suspension up and down. Notice how it, after I let go of it, it bounced up and down a few times before it settled. So it bounces up and down at least twice. One, two, and then it kind of comes back up a little bit even after that. Now if I go the other way, that's pulling up on it first. You'll see it comes down, back up, and then down again. What's happening is, is those valves are opened up and it allows the oil to flow through them and it doesn't really resist the movement of the spring and the suspension. Okay, back at the bike again. We're gonna go into the menu, settings, suspension control, manual track. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this as firm as I can get it. And those valves are going to just about close. They don't fully close, obviously, or the suspension wouldn't be able to move. But they're going to be just about fully shut. And that's going to resist the movement of the oil and resist the movement of the spring. And it's going to keep everything fully controlled. Okay, so now we're going to do this again. This time with the compression and the rebound damping fully uh, in the firm setting. Look at that. It barely moves at all. It comes back up and it stops. I'm pulling on this thing as hard as I can and there's almost no movement with the suspension. So if you have this setting and you hit a bump, it's going to resist that action. It's also going to resist if you go into a dip and you actually may lose traction because it's too stiff and it's not going to allow the suspension to actually move in its travel. So what are we going to need to do this? Uh, first of all, we're going to need some tools. Um, if you don't have some of the tools that I have, you're going to need a second person, possibly a third person to help you out. But don't worry, they don't have to be riders. They can be anybody that knows how to uh, read a ruler. Um, and then you're going to need the actual tools to make the adjustments and make the measurements. Um, and we're going to go over those now. Doing this yourself, and you don't have a second or a third person to assist you, you're going to need a tool to measure that sag. Uh, I have the Motul Slack, uh, it's called the Slacker. Uh, it's a digital scale, and it's got a little wire that comes out, and it'll measure it right here. I also have the remote um, display. And what I do is I put this on the handlebars and then it tells me exactly what the scale or what the sag of the bike is. If you don't have access to a sag scale, a digital sag scale, um, you're going to need a couple of assistants to help you out. But uh, all you really need is just a tape measure, uh, preferably one that reads in millimeters because that's where we're going to do most of our adjustments. 
Um, you can, if you have a standard tape measure that only measures in inches, um, there's a function on Google. You just uh, type in the uh, conversion and you can figure out the millimeters by doing a conversion. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, you're also gonna need a notebook and a pen. And that's so you can write down all of your measurements. Once we get those measurements, then we're going to have to actually go to, we're going to uh, have to change the preload on the bike. And for that, we're going to need tools. Um, a lot of bikes, they come with a tool to adjust the suspension. This right here is the, uh, an Olin's um, fork wrench or fork wrench. It's a shock wrench. Um, and what that does is it allows you to move the, uh, the collars at the bottom of the spring to get the proper uh, amount of sag. Um, if you came here for my 2019 Tuono and you're curious about how to do it on that motorcycle um, with the electronic suspension like mine has, um, the bike comes with a tool. Basically the whole tool kit that comes underneath the seat um, is basically just the tools to adjust the rear shock. and. Uh, you stick this on there, you stick this through the hole, and then you can twist it as you need to. That's just for the rear shock. Now for the front forks, you're gonna need a 32 millimeter wrench. And it's gotta be a wrench, um, or you can use an open-end wrench as well. You don't have to be 32 millimeters if you have a universal wrench, but I would highly suggest getting the tool that's the right size for you. Um, on the Tuono, the front, um, the front handlebars block the access to the uh, the front fork caps so you can't get a socket with an extension on there to make the adjustments so you're gonna need a wrench on other bikes uh, particularly like the ZX10 all you need is a really long Phillips head screwdriver and you can twist at the top uh, of the fork to get the proper um, preload adjustment on other motorcycles like my old RSV4 it's gonna be a, uh, I believe it was a 17 inch, it's either a 14 inch or a 17 inch, uh, 17 millimeter um, socket with a wrench. And uh, most bikes with clip-ons have that kind of setup and it's pretty easy to adjust. You just gotta find out what tools you're gonna to need uh, by looking at the, uh, the top of the fork cap and seeing what actually adjusts it. I also like to use a, uh, a little pick tool and for the 2019 Tuono, um, or above, anything with electronic suspension, there's an electrical connector that goes into the top of each fork, and you have to be able to release that connector. I just get in there and pry it. I'll show you in part two of the video when we actually do it. It's a lot easier than it sounds. Um, also on other motorcycles, to adjust the compression and rebound damping, um, you're gonna need a little pocket screwdriver. And uh, that just allows you to make the little adjustments. You'll feel the clicks, and uh, we're going to talk about that later as well. On the rear shock, you'll see uh, on most motorcycles, um, they're either going to have one of two things. They're going to have a ramp style adjuster, or they're going to have um, two collars. And you're going to have a lock, locking collar, and then the actual adjustment collar. And uh, I'm going to try to put videos up for that as well. Uh, to show you how to adjust those. And also, before you start the uh, adjustment, just know that if you have your motorcycle up on race stands, um, it's not sitting at the ride height that it would be as if it were sitting under its own weight. So you're gonna need a chalk. Uh, I have one from Harbor Freight. It was relatively expensive. I don't remember how much it costs. It's probably more now with uh, the cost of things going up these days, but um, they're pretty easy to come by. Most Harbor Freight stores sell them, or you can find them online somewhere. Uh, from any motorcycle retailer and uh, if you're gonna get one uh, that way I'd go ahead and get a good one you don't want one that's uh, gonna fall over or have the bike lean to one side um, my Harbor Freight one is not the greatest the bike does lean a little bit when you're sitting on it trying to measure your own sag by yourself um, but it's not unsafe it's uh, it just is what it is so if you can afford it obviously get the good one all right, so that's it for today, guys. Uh, join me in the next one, part two of the motorcycle suspension setup series, where we actually uh, take measurements and make adjustments uh, in the real world. And we'll put all that uh, theoretical knowledge to good use. Thanks for watching.